Hello, my name is Richard. I'm the pastor of the King's Church in Adelston in Surrey. At the moment, we're looking at the subject of what it is to be a church. Um, and last week, um, I spoke about um, accepting one another and how uh, the strong are to bear uh, with the failings of the weak. And um, so if you didn't hear last week's message, then you, it's available online. Check it out. Um, so I'm going to carry on with that and how that works in practice a little bit more today. Um, and, and as with all of these things, everything in church, really, the foundation is the way of Jesus. Um, Jesus accepts us in all our weaknesses, in all our brokenness, um, in all our uncleanness. And we are to do likewise to one another. So... You know, as it was in the church 2,000 years ago, so it is now that people, when they come into church, they come with their own personal baggage in some way, shape or form. Um, we all come with our own experiences, our own weaknesses, our own beliefs, our fears, our anxieties, our own foibles, our own habits. All of those things, in many ways, unique to us. Um, uh, and some people will seem to have um, a set way of doing things. Um, and others will be more free and not so fussed about traditions. Um, some people will think they're free, but actually their freedom looks very similar every week. <laughs> um, and others are really free, even though they follow um, traditions. That's just this, the strange nature of church sometimes. Now, 2,000 years ago, um, one of the big issues was food. What you should and what you shouldn't eat. Um, what you could, what you couldn't eat, that, that was just like a, a, a big deal. And, and we're not talking about, um, you know, whether you should have your five a day fruit and veg or whether you should avoid sugars uh, or eat less fat and less red meat, all that kind of thing. I'm, I'm pretty sure that they cared very little about that kind of thing. The dietary issues for the church and the people of 2000 years ago were more about, is it okay to eat certain types of food from a spiritual or religious context should we be restricted to the jewish kosher clean foods that are prescribed in the old testament laws um, and so in modern speak if you want um, i'm going to really oversimplify this but it's basically are we going to have a bacon sandwich or not that's a real over oversimplification but it just gives you an idea um, is it okay even to eat food um, sacrificed to idols or false gods Food that's been offered to seemingly evil spiritual powers. I mean, is that okay? That's the kind of thing they were talking about back then. Um, because for them, really, food wasn't just filling your stomach and keeping yourself alive. Um, food had deep religious and spiritual uh, significance. Um, and, and, you know, in many ways, food marked out who you were uh, and which tribe uh, and religion you belonged to. So maybe when you're eating your ham sandwich for lunch, you, you, you can reflect on that. Because the, the food you ate uh, could actually mean uh, which group you were part of or which group you were ostracised from, actually. But as ever, Jesus broke these rules and he, he broke those, these practices wide open. And it was very disorientating and actually reorientating for the leaders of the early church because through Jesus... All foods were declared clean, which was a radical thing for many of the Jewish uh, leaders of the first century church. There was no more unclean and clean foods. And by association, because food and identity were so closely um, linked, that also applied then to people. There was no longer the us and them. There was no more the, the Jews and the non-Jews. There was no more the in people and the out people. You know, the we're in, they're out kind of thing. Jesus overcame all those divisions and and those divided categories and he says you can eat it all pork bacon sandwiches crackling i'm oversimplifying again but those are just some of the things i like um you can even eat the church taught food offered to idols that's pretty seems pretty serious but actually the, the scriptures teach well idols are actually nothing there is one god there is one Lord Jesus and the idols are nothing. So you, you can eat those foods because it, those idols are meaningless. So there's a great freedom in Jesus and in his ways. Uh, um, and the thing is that many people 
Uh, they just couldn't get their head around that. The old ways were so ingrained in them. The old habits um, were, were just really, yeah, they were deep rooted. Um, and whilst some people uh, found that freedom, that they were able to eat everything and anything, um, there were people that also really struggled with that and they found that really offensive um, and that certain foods for them were still richly unclean and they just couldn't do it. And, and they found it strange and, and as I say, very offensive that others were doing that. So the church had to wrestle with this. Well, what do we do with this? How do we work this out? Um, well, the answer came in this. The, the strong in faith, those who had maybe a fuller understanding of the gospel of Jesus, those people were to bear with those who were weaker in faith, those whose understanding of the gospel was maybe a little bit restricted or they just haven't got a full picture. And that meant that the people who knew that they were free were to deliberately refrain from eating or doing things uh, which would have caused offence or stumbling to the people who were less free. And so in practice that meant that if the church was together and there are some people there that thought you shouldn't eat certain types of food, then everybody didn't eat those types of food. So, so that there was nobody there causing offence to other people just because their freedom um, was being expressed and other people thought, actually, no, that, I can't go that far. That's bearing with one another, that's bearing with each other. Now, today's issues are different. We don't have these issues about kosher foods and all that kind of thing in the church on the whole. But things like um, alcohol, you know, where there are some people that have struggled with alcohol in the past and some people have never struggled with alcohol. But for the sake of bearing with one another and the strong helping the weak, then we're just not going to drink alcohol around those people um, because we don't want them to stumble. It may be that they don't want to drink alcohol for a religious reason, or it may be uh, because they have addiction problems from their past. Um, another way this can work out, maybe uh, actually currently face masks. You know, we're all coming out of lockdown and some people are really anxious about that still and feel the comfort of actually having the face mask on. That may seem like weakness to some people, um, but I don't really care. Because actually, I want to bear with those people. I want to love them. I want to accept them. So if it means I wear a mask when I feel as though I don't need to wear a mask so that I can love that person, so be it. That's how that works. Um, it can work out in all kinds of ways. You know, the way we worship, uh, the style of the way we do things. These things have many applications. Now, you stop and think about this. You may be thinking, well, actually, all this bearing with one another and deferring to the sort of the weaker or the... Uh, yeah, the weaker ones, uh, may mean that we end up uh, with the lowest common denominator, meaning that the church becomes restricted by the weakness of the weakest links. You may think that. But um, actually, that's not the aim or the goal. We are, as the scriptures say, we're to please our neighbour for their good to build them up. You see, it's about getting alongside people where they're at and walking along with them where they are, but walking with them towards a greater freedom. You see, if you look at what happened with Jesus, Almighty God, the strongest of the strong, okay, this is Almighty God, he didn't stay in heaven telling mankind, you know, you know like in a Monty Python type sketch, you know, how useless uh, that humankind was, just shouting down from heaven, you know, I'm big and strong and you're also just useless. Neither did God just send happy thoughts from heaven. You know, poor little things, helpless things on earth. Never mind. Oh, happy thoughts. And so in the church, in Christ, the strong shouldn't look down or scorn the weak. Because that's not what Almighty God did. And neither should they facilitate things and allow the situation for the strong to stay strong and the weak to stay weak by just sort of saying, ah, oh, happy thoughts and... Let's not change anything. But if you look at what happened with Jesus, God so loved the world that he sent his only son to be amongst us, to be like us, to suffer what we suffer alongside us, to show and to demonstrate a new and eternal life in the spirits, a life of freedom, encouraging people to follow him, literally follow him step by step and do as he did. And so in the church, 
in the people of Christ. We, we bend down in humility towards the people around us. And, and we walk alongside them where they're at, walking with them through whatever they're going through. And in the process, we encourage them and envision them to the new life and the new horizons and the freedom that there is in Christ Jesus. And so life in the church is to follow the way of Christ in new life. I'm going to finish by reading um, some verses from the book of Philippians, um, which I think sums all of this up. This is from Philippians chapter 2. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy be complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen.